Algebra 2B and welcome to another new lesson here. Um, our topic today is how do you perform function operations? Switching gears from radicals for a little bit and going somewhere new here. So, um, important things to remember for this chapter are domain and range. Uh, so recall that domain is a set of all values that you can put into a function. Um, so they're your x values that can go into a function. For example, f of x, and that's just the function of x, is x plus 2. Um, 5x plus 7, or x squared, you can put any x value in there and get a y value out of the equation. Um, or it's just you can put any x value in and get a result. Uh, so the domain um, is all real numbers. Um, it's sometimes denoted by that there. That just means all reals. And any number can go in there. There are no restrictions. Now, that being said, there are some cases where there are restrictions. Um, for example, our um, radical, our square root function, does have some restrictions. In that case, the radicand, or the number inside, that's the radicand, And that must be greater than or equal to zero. Um, the reason being, if you try and take the square root of a negative, like negative four, um, there are no real answers. Okay, so with that being said, the again, the domain is only positive numbers. So only positives. Um, another thing is if you have a fraction, be weary of a fraction with a variable in the denominator um, because what you can never have in a fraction is the denominator equal to zero. Okay, so in this case, what would make the denominator zero? Well, if you said x plus four equal to zero, um, that would mean x being a negative four is a no-go. So the domain can't equal zero. Um, the the uh, domain in this case is all numbers um, except negative four. Okay, so that is what you would have for your domain there. Um, just looking at some examples over here, um, basically what ones do we have to worry about the domain with? Um, we already covered that these three are good. Okay. Um, Square roots, you would need to worry about that, can't be negative. Um, cubic roots actually are a little bit different. These, trick question, are good for all numbers because of the cube. Um, so cubic roots are all good. It's only for even exponents or even um, radicals that you can't. Um, this one's actually good as well. The denominator doesn't have an x in it, so it's okay. Um, but this has the x down there, so it cannot be what we want it to be. Also, let's think about this one, um, square root of x, that has a two, that's a no good. And five thirds, that would be the cubic root of x to the fifth, that one's actually okay. So really, only worry if your index is even. Uh, your index, again, is the number of the square root. So for like square roots, for fourth, for six, etc. And if your variable is in the denominator. It's the only time you gotta worry about domain restrictions. All right, so those two cases. Uh, let's look at some examples of finding when your domain is not um, all reals, finding out what the domain is. So here we have an even index, which means, hey, we need to worry, okay, um, so 2x plus 5. Uh, what we're going to do is just solve for x, uh, or solve for 0. So we want to know where is 2x plus 5. We want to know where that is greater than or equal to 0, okay. Um, what we can do is subtract 5 then because that's what we want, 2x plus 5 is greater than or equal to negative 5. Divide by 2, divide by 2, we know that x must be greater than or equal to um, negative 5 halves. 
Simply put, that is your domain. If you have any numbers uh, less than negative 5 halves, it will give you a negative. Um, here, again, even index, so we need to worry. Um, but just set the 3x minus 7 greater than or equal to 0. That's what we want. Um, you would add 7 over, divide by 3, and x has to be greater than or equal to 7 thirds. That would be your restriction there. For fractions, okay, even easier yet. Remember that it's simply the denominator cannot be zero. So all we do is find out where it can be zero, where it is zero, and we say that x cannot equal negative three. If you subtract three over, that's your case there. Um, so there's your domain restriction. So all reals except x equals 3. Uh, negative 3, sorry. Um, denominator. So you don't need to worry about the x in the numerator. Just set the denominator equal to 0. Um, 3x minus 5 can't be 0. You add the 5 over. Divide by 3. We know that x cannot be 5 thirds. So we have all reals but 5 thirds is our domain. Okay, uh, last one. Actually, a trick question. There is no denominator down there, so there's no domain restriction. Okay, there's no way to make the denominator zero. Uh, so that's an easy one for you. Okay, uh, moving on from there, operations with functions. These are some of the basics. And we do want to talk about the domain okay um, so we can add these we can subtract them and we can compose them um, that's what we're getting into in the near future um, so basically adding the functions together um, h of x we're just making some new function that's our new one and it's going to consist of the parts so we're just going to take 3x that is f of x And we're going to add that to g of x, which is x plus 3. I would recommend putting parentheses around them, just in case we have to do subtraction. You'll see why in a moment. And basically, we have that the new function h of x is equal to 4x plus 3. Now, the domain for this, um, all real numbers. Okay, pretty easy with that one. Subtraction. The thing with subtraction is, so here we will actually take 3x minus x plus 3. And this is where it's important to have your parentheses um, because it's actually minus x minus 3. Um, so it becomes 2x. That's a funky 2. Um, 3 minus 1 is 2, minus 3. And the domain is still all reals. Um, switching it around, so we'll see it's a little bit different if you do it this way. Um, now we have x plus 3 minus 3x. Okay, so it's just backwards. Um, so x minus 3x is minus 2x plus 3 h of x. Domain still all reals. All right, so just get in the habit of deciding where to put everything when you're dividing. Uh, multiplication and division, pretty much the same idea. Uh, just be careful. Uh, so 3x times x plus 3, you're going to distribute. So 3x squared plus 9x is equal to our h of x. Okay, domain all reals and division f up top 3x divided by x plus 3 this can actually not simplify further okay so that is your answer um, here we do have a domain restriction the domain is any x not equal to 3 uh, negative 3 sorry other than that all reals so reals, but 
x can't equal negative 3. Uh, h of x, switching it around, um, x plus 3 divided by 3x. And where can the denominator not be 0? Well, 3 times x equals 0, divide by 3, divide by 3. Uh, we would have all reals, but x equals 0. Okay, so those are the exceptions. Um, here are some practice problems down here. If you just want to take a look at these, you can pause here and come back to it, and then we will move on to some other ones. Okay, so these are all different practice problems. Um, I'll go through real quick, pause, come back to it, and that'll be it. all it is. Be careful with this one. Make sure that you distributed the negative. Domain is still all reals. I'm going to write this one in standard form. That's just the nicest way to do it. Uh, domain, still all reals. Domain still all reals. And here we'll have our first domain restriction. Um, so 5x minus 9 cannot be 0. x cannot be 9 fifths. So all reals. But um, x equals 9 fifths. And the last one here, 5x minus 9 all over 2x to the third. Uh, this one here, so all reals, but x equals 0. Some new ones with these. So these ones now have our exponents. Uh, so just be careful with those ones and remember that in general this is really 3 times x to our square root of x and that this is negative 5 square roots of x. Okay so right off the bat we have a domain restriction that x must be greater than or equal to 0 and the domain x must be greater than or equal to 0. So let's just see what we end up with here. Um, 3x to the 1 half um, plus negative 5x to the 1 half is negative 2x to the 1 half. The domain must be x greater than or equal to 0. Subtraction, um, switching it around though, negative 5x to the 1 half minus 3x to the 1 half is negative 8x to the 1 half domain greater than or equal to 0. Uh, multiplying f to g 3 oops, x to the 1 half times negative 5x to the 1 half uh, remembering these ones, we end up adding the exponents. So this one will be um, negative 15 
um, to the x to the first power essentially. Um, so with this one, however, we still have that restricted domain, so x must be greater than or equal to zero um, because what its parents were. Um, so it inherits the parents' um, domain issues, so to speak. Um, and then dividing 3x to the 1 half divided by negative 5x to the 1 half. Uh, remember that x must be greater than 0 and x cannot be 0. So x cannot be 0 domain x must be greater than or equal to 0. Combining the two of those means pretty much we have negative 3 fifths um, domain x greater than 0. Um, the x's we cancel. Okay, so set up your problem first and then look at what your domain restrictions are and then those carry on um, into the final result. Okay, um, I'll let you stop there. The rest of the problems are really just extra practice. Okay, so feel free to do them. Um, otherwise, just um, pause it or you can stop here, but I will go through. Thank you. 